Glory to God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Are we live? Thank you. We need to change the difference. Hmm? Okay, we change it a little bit. Okay, we're good. Last week, we uh, lost part of the message. I'm not going to go back and do it over again, so we just have to imagine what the rest will be. It was really good. Imagine it to be really good, yes. Glory to God. Excuses. It's about excuses, amen. Uh, this last week, as I was in prayer and reading, and God began to bring some things to my mind, and uh, it's a passage that I've preached before, but every time I God gives me a message in the same passage, it usually changes a little bit. And so we're going to preach it again. And uh, some of the God poured out in my spirit this morning. And it's a very simple passage, and it's it's a very simple title this morning. And that title this morning is Let's Do Launch. Not lunch, but launch. launch. If I said lunch, I probably got a lot better response from everybody. Woo! Pastor's buying lunch. No, he's not. not. Unless you like eating hot dogs. Yes. <laughs> And if you like eating hot dogs and they still think pastors buy lunch, you're sorely mistaken. <laughs> Glory to God. But if you have your Bibles, turn over to Luke chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 1. We're going to talk about a few things this morning. And a few things that through this time, and I told my wife the other day, I said, I, I tried, I, I'm trying to get away from using the coronavirus, but it's something that is affecting all of us right now. So it ends up in just about every message, it seems like. Uh, you know, it just keeps rolling over in my mind some of the things that, that is that people are allowing to happen that God says doesn't need to happen. Amen? Amen. So in verse uh, 1 of chapter 5, it says this of Luke. It says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Now this was talking about Jesus, and he was standing there, and people was pressing upon him wanting to hear the word of God. Let me tell you something, church, it's been a long time since we had people pressing upon the church to hear the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. They press upon the church to have a good social gathering. They press upon the church to, uh, to find out what they can say is wrong with the church, but they don't press upon the church to hear the word of God. We as Christians today have gotten into a place today in this day and age that we need to start pressing into the church and into hear the word of God. Yeah. Not just to get a good feeling, not just to get a, oh, I got the old goosebumps, the old hallelujah bumps and all that nonsense, but to get into a place to hear the word of God that God can come into our hearts and minister to us and do surgery if necessary in our lives. Amen? Amen. And it says that he saw two ships. Standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Now I want to start right there where it says that he saw two ships. As I began to read this, God began to show me something. And what he showed me was churches today have been up to this point, the two ships sitting there. We've got comfortable with whoever comes to the door. Let's try to win them, but let's don't go out and do anything about it. Come on. We've got comfortable of working in the shallows. A few years back, I was up at McSwain, and they had just, the week before, they had just planted the pond. And so they had all these new fish. I mean, it was nice looking fish, nice looking trout. You know, and so I went out there with my fishing pole, and I got it, I saw people fishing, so I found me a decent spot, and I cast out there, and man, nothing. There was nothing. But I looked down at my feet, and there were fish swimming by the shore, that far off the shore. And I'm watching them, so I take and drop the hook right there. Nothing! Fish swam right by me. In fact, one of them actually hit my bait with its nose to go around. Oh, no. That's embarrassing. When you can't catch fish, they're at your feet. Listen, church. It's embarrassing that the church can't catch the fish that are at their feet. Amen. Come on. Amen. But it said there were two ships, and the churches have got very comfortable with staying in their four walls. The church got very comfortable with letting sinners come to them instead of them go to sinners. Yes. Yes. Amen. We've been on our ships in the shallow water trying to grab the low-hanging fruit, if you will. I told my wife that the other day. I said, you know, sometimes you just try to grab the low-hanging fruit. And that old saying, if you know what that means, that means you try to grab that fruit. You don't have to go on a ladder to get You don't have to work for it. You just reach out and pick it up. And you can eat it. You can peel it. Whatever it is that you want. It's easy stuff. Yeah. The churches have gotten to the point they want the easy center. They don't want the hard center. Come on. Come on. Oh, some of you say, no, I don't know about that, Pastor. Some of you don't want to work. 
Uh -huh. yeah. My dad taught me a long time ago, you work for what you get. Yes. Yeah. And you'll, you'll, you'll respect what you get when you work for it. Amen. So there's two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. The churches today have too many fishermen that said, you know what, I've done it long enough. I'm good. I'm going to go wash my nets now. Come on. See, and, and when, you're, when, you're, when you're deep sea fishing like that with nets, when you bring them out of the water, you have to go wash them or the salt water will eat them away. But as long as you're fishing in the salt water, it'll keep them from eating away until they come out and they touch the air and the salt begins to activate. Church, we've got too many people that have taken their Christianity and brought it out of the water and hung it up and are washing it off because they want to still look like the good, clean Christian they once wanted to be. Let me tell you something, church. It's time we become, and if, you know, now hear me on this, and don't shout me down, just hear me. It's time we become the dirty Christian. Come on. Come on. We need to get reach out there and save souls and let that net get some salt water on it yeah. and start to scoop those souls out yeah. instead of hanging up and trying to keep our pristine, yeah. our pristine way of life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we got really comfortable here a few years back because of the church I was wearing suits. I dressed sharp. I had nice suits. I had nice shoes. And I, I got real comfortable in that. But I began to understand that it wasn't the people who was walking through the door that needed to be saved. It was the people that was out in the streets that needed to be saved. Yeah. It was the people that you work with that needed to be saved. It's yeah. the people that you shop with that need to be saved. Yeah. It's the people that, that you see at Dollar General that need to be saved. Yeah. Amen. Yes. It says that he entered in, he entered into one of the ships. God, through this coronavirus, has gotten church to open their doors back to him. Because yeah. mm -hmm. what's the first thing that was said when the coronavirus hit and they said churches can't have meetings? Yeah. What are we going to do? Yeah. What are we going to do? Now, we had been broadcast on Facebook before that ever happened. Yeah. I've seen more churches now on Facebook than I've ever seen before. And I've said this every Sunday, I believe. We all went from, from ministers, from pastors to televangelists overnight. That's right. <laughs> Now, I see there's different states this morning that pastors are starting to have church service, actual church service with people in their, in their church. And that's great. But why don't we take advantage of what God has done, not what God has done, what God has allowed, what Satan has done, but what God has allowed, and God has taken and turned it around for his good. Why don't we take advantage of reaching out and getting souls that we would have never talked to any other way? Yes, hallelujah. It says he entered in, and when I looked at that, I thought, my word. God has now got the church to a place where they're starting to turn to him again. Let me tell you something. You, you may think just because of the church that it's a good, good Christian foundation. That doesn't necessarily mean so. Yes. And some churches have turned away from God and they've had more of a social gathering. Come on. Church, it's time that we get back to the old, the old I, and I know people, some people don't like it, but I like the old gospel music. Yeah. Amen. The new stuff's great, but I like the old gospel music. Yeah. Yes. They were singing, they were singing here a while ago. Keep on the firing line. Yes. Uh, those old musics, those old hymns, those old things. They, they. I was listening this morning to uh, this old house, and I was listening to songs like that this morning as I was getting ready for church. And, and I began to think about it. And I thought, you know what? Maybe God just wants us to get back to the grassroots of this thing. Yes, yeah. Amen. Getting back to instead of having, I, I got a pastor that I, I, I watch, and his, his name's uh, Locke, and he uh, he's from Tennessee, and you know he he was saved. I believe it was seven years ago. Just recently, he was with his celebrating his his salvation birthday. But he, you know what? He goes in and he reaches out to people, and he's back to the grassroots. Oh, they have the new new gospel hymns and all that stuff. That's great. But when he preaches, he preaches grassroots Pentecostal, grassroots belief. Yes. And I'm not talking Pentecostal church. I'm talking Pentecostal belief. Yes. Right. It says that he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. What we was doing before the coronavirus hit, what we were supposed to be learning from God. Yes. He was sitting down on the ship and he was teaching just off the land. Yeah. Because, see, no fisherman can launch out without first being trained how to do it. That's right. We've had advantages that we haven't taken advantage of. Amen. We've had opportunities that God has given us to learn. And now he's... We've been pushed into this place that we need to take a launch out yes. into a deeper part yes. of the world. Amen? Amen. Yes. 
We have the opportunity now. I don't know how many followers I have. I don't look at that. I don't know how many followers you have. I don't care. But the fact of the matter is, if you really looked at that and see how many followers, you'd be surprised how many people that your everyday words, whatever you put on Facebook, whatever you put on Instagram, whatever you put on YouTube, whatever you put on whatever the social media is you use, Twitter, MySpace, if you're really old. <laughs> Whatever you put on there, there are people listening to see what you're saying. That's right. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I look at my, I'm in my space. I don't have my space. I, I'm not that old. I look at Facebook maybe once to twice a day, mainly to see what's going on with other people in their lives, look at the funny stuff. But I learn a lot too. Yes. I see what people, what's happening in other people's churches what other pastors are going through. Let me tell you something, church. There's a lot of pastors out there that are going through a lot because they launched out. And there's a lot of pastors out there that need to launch out and get out, get off the shore. Amen. 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 Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, now, now let's back up for a minute. How exciting would it have been for Simon to be standing there by his boat, minding his own business, and Jesus say, hey, let's get in the boat. we got to go out a little bit. Can you imagine him? Hey, hey, come on, let's get, let's get. Jesus wants to go with us. So it says, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. It is time that we need to launch out. Yes, amen. Launching out doesn't mean you just let the boat float. That means you push. Yeah. That means you push out there. See, when it says launch out into the deep, that means actively make yeah. yourself get out there. That's right. My wife and I, we are trying to be healthy. That's an overdue thing, sometimes. <laughs> so the other morning, I told her, I said, I'm getting up in the morning. I'm going down the field. I'm walking the field. So we got up. We went out the door. My English bulldog came out with us. We walked all the way out to the field. We got out there. We started walking a circle. The English bulldog made a half a circle, got in the center, and walked us, made five loops around her. <laughs> then when we was done, we started back in. Here she came. Like, she don't want exercise. <laughs> But see, we had to get up, we had to get on our shoes and our clothes and everything to come out and to get, even though it's all my property, it's still to get out there and do, we had to make ourselves. Church, if you don't make yourself reach out to a lost and dying world, God ain't going to make you do it. That's right. It's got to be a desire of your heart, what you want to do. Yeah, that's right, man. Church, God never called us to set the church and let him bring them in. He said, you bring them in, I'll save them. Yes. That's right. That's what he said. You witness to them, I'll save them. Amen. You preach to them, I'll save them. That's right. All you got to do is just give your word to them. Right. Just give them a testimony. Tell them what I've done in your life. And Amen. tell them what the zeal that it is in your life. Yeah. And I'll, I'll save them. Yeah. But see, we've got it in our heads. We got saved. We got into church. And oh, if somebody comes along, that's great. But that's okay. We're still going to heaven. And that may be true. But would, would you rather, would, do you want a shack on the backside of heaven or do you want a mansion up on Main Street? Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Good luck. Choice. He said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for the drought. It's time that we let down our nets. We're, we're in a, such an awesome opportunity right now. Yeah. That we can let down our nets on Facebook. Yeah. We have YouTube. We have all kinds of stuff going on. And you can let down your nets, and, and people will draw to you because you're giving them something that they're missing in this world. I, I, I told my wife, I said, I only watch news 15 minutes a day. Because after 15 minutes, you've seen everything that's on the news. Yes. Yes. Amen. It's true. It just repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. And so I'll watch 15 minutes of news, and I turn it over and watch MASH. It's happier. <laughs> yeah. True. The church. During that 15 minutes, there's people that thrive on this, and they don't see a way out. All they see is the negative. And church, if we can launch out in the deep and drop our nets and give them a positive day, yes. if we can launch out and give them a positive God, let me tell you something. That's what the world's looking for. This gives us, a, it gives us the opportunity for people to turn to God and find out there is a better way than the way they're living. Amen. Amen. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night. Here goes the excuses. Remember last yeah. week was on excuses? Yeah. Here it goes. We have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. But here's where his excuse changed to trust. Nevertheless, 
at thy word, Amen. I will let down the net. We have not let down the net, even though Jesus has been saying, let down your nets. Uh -huh. We have not been fishing, even though God has been saying, come on, get in the boat, let's go. We have not been doing what God has called us to do. We have, we have been reaching out and we have been trying to show people the word. But the fact is, are we really into it? I'll tell you. My wife makes peanut butter cookies for me. And she puts them on a plate and they stack about yay high. Her and Jeremiah made them this last week. And I had me a big old glass of milk and I really got into them. <laughs> now I finished most, I think I finished them all off. The kids had a few, but I, I ate them all. Why? Those are my peanut butter cookies and I get into that kind of thing. <laughs> Why don't we have the same desire for God? That's right. Right. Why don't we have the desire to get into God, to get into God's word daily? I don't care if it's just starting in Matthew and reading a couple chapters or read a couple verses. Why don't we get into that? Why don't we get into getting the emotional that we do daily? Why don't we get into talking to God daily? Why don't we get into God into praying about things daily? Yes. Yeah. Instead of just running wild and just saying, well, God will handle it. You know what? God's not going to handle anything if you're not going to talk to him about it. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It says, and when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net breaks. Yes. Yes, Let me tell you something, church. This whole thing's going to be done one of these days. Mm -hmm. This whole coronavirus garbage. The fear that people live in is going to be done. And we're going to go back to our church. Amen. Is our nets going to be filled if they break? Oh. Or are we just going to go back in, hang them up, start washing them off again? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The churches today have an opportunity and a great opportunity at that to share the word of God with people because they're looking for something. And when you can share it today and you can show how you can live positively, positively through this thing, then when we go back to our buildings, those people will come into the buildings and begin to be a successful Christian. That is what we're looking for, successful Christians. Amen. Amen. Not just visitors. That's right. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. Men reach men. Women reach women. Yep. Mm -hmm. My pickup is not going to reach your lost loved ones. My dog is not going to reach your lost loved ones. Who's going to reach them? You and I. Yeah, that's it. Church, they said that they, the word said that the ship began to be got so full that they called to the other ships, Hey, come over here in the deep part. Yeah. And help get some of these fish out of the water. Mm -hmm. Church, let me tell you something. I don't care what church they go to. If there's if if, if if we get so full that we cannot contain them, we'll build bigger. And if that doesn't work, then we'll call another church and see if we can start another church somewhere. I told my wife the other day, I said, something that I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to have our church be mother of another church. Yes. But we haven't done it because we haven't got out in the deep yet. That's right. Come on. We tool around the edge watching the fish bump our, our bait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You know, some of the other, another thing I found out that day. There was people and they was out there, little kids trying to fish and whatnot, and these, these fish were swimming around, like I said. And one of them took a net, scooped them up. That's illegal. It's not, it doesn't give the, the fish a fighting chance. You can scoop people up and try to put them in Christianity, but if Christianity ain't them, they're not staying. That's right. It's illegal. It's not the way God designed it. God designed it that you come in and you catch them. And he puts Christianity in them. He puts the love of God in them. He puts yes. salvation in them. Yes. You cannot put that in them. That's right. It says, and they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Oh, how would you love it if our church was so full that we didn't have room to sit on Sunday morning? We just keep moving to smaller buildings, maybe that'll happen, huh? No. no. We need a bigger building. We need to fill that one and fill another right. building. Then we need to fill more buildings. And I'm not saying because old Pastor Swain wants to have a big number. I don't care about number. What I care about is souls. Yeah. And the bigger the number you got, the more souls you're going to get. Yeah. And the more you have, the more that God's getting blessed Amen. and glorified. Amen? Amen. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Let me tell you something. We need some more repentance in church. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. The Christians need to repent 
Yes. God help me. That's right. Yeah. God help me. I'm sorry. I've not looked outside of our walls. I've not looked at this coronavirus as a positive. I've looked at it only as a negative. I told my wife we found out, and of course most of you know that that uh, Costco, as of tomorrow, you have to wear masks. Everybody. I told my wife, I said, you know, when I put this mask on, if somebody looks at my mask, this is what they're going to see. <laughs> she says, I know. I also told them if I have to come with a mask on, I'm not buying anything next time. They're not paying them anything anyway. We went in, because they, they, they said last, last Monday it was supposed to start, and they changed it. So we went in, uh, we were Saturday, Friday, Friday we went in. And we had our mask, and I put my mask up, and she got her mask on, and we see the sign said 5-4. I went inside, took my hat, my glasses off, took my mask off, threw it back in her purse, and then, oops.